All right, thank you, Barbara. Our focus for this first iteration was to give Dr. Salmia's patients an easy way to peruse her knowledge base and really learn about homeopathy. Her knowledge base consists of PDFs indexed by symptom. So what we did was extract the content from each one of those PDFs and use that to create a database that we're hosting on AWS. Now what you see here is an emulated Android mobile device. And this is the main screen that is served to a patient when they want to search Dr. Salmia's knowledge base. Its function is to allow a patient to enter a symptom, click this go button, query the database, and return the best possible treatment for that symptom. Here we've included buttons with some common symptoms for a quick search, but for this example, let's pretend our patient is typing in a symptom, and that symptom is going to be a stuffy nose. So symptom is entered, go button is clicked, and here we see the medication that we need to take to treat our stuffy nose. Now, the way this works is our app is not interacting with the AWS database directly. Rather, it's fetching JSON data from a REST server that sits between the mobile device and the AWS database. Now, I'm going to pull up that REST server for just a moment here. This is a Spring Boot application with an embedded Tomcat server. I've got it in IntelliJ. And if we take a look at the properties file, we can see that we're connected to our AWS database. This is running on localhost port 8080. And I've defined a simple function here that returns a single treatment. Now, the main thing to take note of here is this slash search rest endpoint. From here, we fetch our JSON data. Now, if you're not familiar with how REST API works, hopefully this makes a little more sense in just a second. Just remember this slash search REST endpoint. Coming back now to Android Studio, you're going to see this phone disappear for just a moment. Once our patient clicks that Go button, this parse JSON method is called. We then make a connection to our REST API server using this JSON object request, passing in the URL for our REST endpoint localhost port 8080 slash search. Next I'm going to copy this endpoint, open up a browser, and paste this into the search bar so that we can see the data sitting at our REST endpoint. Switching back to the phone. Here we can see the data at our REST endpoint corresponds to the content being served to our patient. We've got the name of the medication here, and I won't embarrass myself by trying to pronounce that. We've got the dose of 30C. We've got the name of the medication here with the dose of 30C. Now, as I mentioned, that rest endpoint is very important because if we have it wrong, say we're missing the H, we have a typo or something like that, and we look for data at this address, we're not gonna find anything at all. We'll get an error page. Coming back once again to Android Studio. Once we have that JSON object, it is parsed, added to a queue. We then create a new intent, and we pass in the context of this package, along with the corresponding class object of the screen that we want to open next. Then calling the start activity method is what brings our patient to this screen here. Next, if our patient wants to learn a bit more about this particular medicine, Clicking this medicine button will serve a screen with the name of the medicine along with the symptoms that it treats. If our patient would like to learn a bit more about the ailment most commonly associated with the symptom, in this case that would be sinusitis, clicking on this button will serve our patient a more comprehensive treatment plan. With each one of these button clicks, a similar protocol takes place behind the scenes in order to serve this content. Clicking this back button will return our patient to the main search screen.